Have you ever wondered what causes urinary incontinence? Today we're going to delve into the basics of this condition that affects a significant portion of the population. Urinary incontinence, simply put, is the involuntary leakage of urine. It's a symptom, not a disease and it can be caused by many different medical conditions or physical changes. The primary types of urinary incontinence are urgency incontinence, stress urinary incontinence, mixed incontinence, and overflow incontinence. Urgency incontinence is often a result of an overactive detrusor muscle, which controls the bladder. This could be due to a central nervous system lesion, inflammation or infection, bladder neck obstruction, or even benign prostatic hyperplasia also known as an enlarged prostate. Sometimes the cause can't be identified and is considered idiopathic. On the other hand, stress urinary incontinence is more common in women, though it's also seen in men following prostate cancer treatment or pelvic surgery. The cause here is usually urethral hypermobility, which can be due to weakened pelvic floor and musculofascial urethral and vaginal supporting mechanisms. This allows the bladder neck and urethra to descend with increased intra-abdominal pressure and the urethra is pulled open by greater motion of the posterior wall of the outlet relative to the anterior wall. This type of incontinence is often associated with childbirth, pelvic surgery, aging, and levator muscle weakness. Mixed incontinence is a combination of stress and urgency incontinence. Overflow incontinence, a term no longer recommended by the International Continence Society due to its lack of a clear definition, is urinary incontinence as a complication of urinary retention. Now how prevalent is urinary incontinence? It varies, especially among women, with a prevalence of 25 to 45 percent. The ratio of females to males with this condition is 2 to 1. It's also more frequent among the elderly, affecting 5 to 15 percent of those living in the community and half of nursing home residents. Understanding urinary incontinence begins with knowing what it is and how prevalent it is in the population. We'll explore more about the causes, symptoms, and treatments of urinary incontinence in the following scenes. So, stay tuned. So, stay. So, what causes urinary incontinence? Let's delve into the details. Urinary incontinence can generally be categorized into two types, urgency incontinence and stress urinary incontinence. Urgency incontinence is characterized by a sudden intense urge to urinate followed by an involuntary loss of urine. This can be caused by a variety of factors, including detrusor overactivity, which can stem from central nervous system lesions, inflammation, infection, bladder neck obstruction, or even idiopathic causes. Decreased compliance of the bladder wall can also be a factor, often due to central nervous system lesions or fibrosis. Stress urinary incontinence, on the other hand, involves involuntary leakage of urine during physical activity that puts pressure on your bladder. This could be anything from coughing and sneezing to exercising or even laughing. This type of incontinence is commonly seen in women, but can also occur in men after prostate cancer treatment or pelvic operations. The root cause of stress urinary incontinence is often urethral hypermobility, a condition where the weakened pelvic floor and musculofacial urethral and vaginal supporting mechanisms allow the bladder neck and urethra to descend with increased intra-abdominal pressure. This descent can pull open the urethra by the greater motion of the posterior wall of the outlet relative to the anterior wall. Factors that can contribute to this condition include childbirth, pelvic surgery, aging, and levator muscle weakness. Intrinsic sphincter deficiency, or ISD, is another significant cause of stress urinary incontinence. This refers to the weakness of the urethra and associated smooth and striated muscle elements. Causes of ISD can include pelvic surgery, neurological problems, aging, and a hypoestrogen state. It's important to note that both ISD and urethral hypermobility can coexist, further exacerbating the issue. So, as you can see, there are numerous causes to urinary incontinence, many of which are related to physical changes in the body. Understanding these causes can help medical professionals develop effective treatment plans and can also help patients understand why they're experiencing these symptoms. Now that we know what causes urinary incontinence, what are the symptoms to look out for? Urinary incontinence is not a disease but rather a symptom of underlying conditions. Therefore, recognizing the symptoms is crucial to address the root cause. One way to categorize these symptoms is through the concept of lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTS. This includes storage symptoms often referred to by the acronym FUND, frequency, urgency, nocturia, and dysuria. Frequency is when you find yourself needing to use the bathroom more often than usual. 
This can be a sign that your bladder isn't holding urine as well as it should. Urgency, on the other hand, is a strong, sudden need to urinate. This can be so intense that it's hard to delay going to the bathroom. If you've ever had to rush to the restroom because you couldn't wait, you've experienced urgency. Nocturia is a term for waking up frequently during the night to urinate. This can be particularly disruptive to your sleep and overall quality of life. The last letter in our acronym D stands for dysuria, which means painful urination. If it hurts when you go to the bathroom, it could be a sign of urinary incontinence. Now let's consider voiding symptoms. These include changes in the stream of urine, hesitancy to start urinating, feeling of incomplete emptying, and dribbling after urination, collectively remembered by the acronym SHED. Stream changes can mean anything from a weaker flow to a stream that stops and starts. Hesitancy involves difficulty initiating urination, while incomplete emptying is the sensation of not fully emptying the bladder. Dribbling refers to leaking a few drops of urine after you've finished. All these symptoms can greatly interfere with daily life, causing embarrassment and inconvenience. But remember, urinary incontinence is not an inevitability. It's a medical issue, and like many medical issues, it can be treated. Recognizing these symptoms is the first step towards getting a diagnosis and starting treatment. Did you know there are reversible causes of urinary incontinence? Yes, you heard that right. Now to understand these causes better, let's delve into the DIAPERS acronym. Starting with D, we have delirium. This is a sudden change in mental state or sudden confusion which can lead to urinary incontinence. It's often reversible once the cause is identified and treated. Next up is I, standing for inflammation or infection. Urinary tract infections can irritate your bladder, causing strong urges to urinate and sometimes incontinence. Treatment with antibiotics can swiftly reverse this kind of incontinence. A represents atrophic vaginitis or urethritis. This is a thinning, drying, and inflammation of the vaginal walls due to your body having less estrogen. Topical estrogen therapies can often help reverse symptoms. Moving on to P, which stands for pharmaceuticals or psychological factors. Certain medications can lead to increased urine production or bladder muscle overactivity, leading to incontinence. Adjusting, changing, or stopping the medication can often reverse the incontinence. Psychological factors such as severe depression or anxiety can also contribute to urinary incontinence. E signifies excess urine output. Conditions like diabetes can increase urine production, leading to overflow incontinence. Proper management of these conditions can help reverse incontinence. R stands for restricted mobility. This leads to inability to reach the toilet in time. Physical therapy or assisted devices can often improve mobility and reverse incontinence. Lastly, S represents stool impaction. Chronic constipation can cause nerve damage that affects bladder control. Treating the constipation can reverse the incontinence. It's important to remember that each of these causes is not exclusive and they can co-occur. Therefore, it's not uncommon to see a patient with urinary incontinence due to multiple reasons. So keep in mind, urinary incontinence isn't always a permanent condition. Identifying and addressing these reversible causes can help manage and potentially reverse urinary incontinence. This is why it's crucial to have a comprehensive understanding of the factors that can lead to this condition. Understanding these reversible causes can help in managing and potentially reversing urinary incontinence. Remember, knowledge is the first step towards effective management. Let's dive into the treatment options for urinary incontinence. It's important to note that the treatment varies depending on the type of incontinence and the patient's specific circumstances. Starting with urgency incontinence, this often caused by bladder overactivity. The treatment usually involves medications known as anticholinergics or beta-3 agonists, which help to relax the bladder, reducing the urgency to urinate. In some cases, physical therapy or nerve stimulation techniques may be used. On the other hand, stress incontinence is typically due to weakness in the urethra or pelvic muscles. This can occur after childbirth or certain surgeries. In such cases, physical therapy focusing on strengthening the pelvic floor muscles is often the first line of treatment. If physical therapy is not effective, surgical options such as slings or urethral bulking agents may be considered. Mixed incontinence, as the name suggests, is a combination of urgency and stress incontinence. Therefore, the treatment approach is typically a combination, addressing both the bladder overactivity and the muscle weakness. In addition to these treatments, lifestyle modifications can play a crucial role in managing urinary incontinence. This includes maintaining a healthy weight, 
avoiding bladder irritants such as caffeine and alcohol, and practicing timed voiding or bladder training techniques. Lastly, it's worth noting that some cases of incontinence can be reversed. For example, if incontinence is caused by medications or an underlying condition such as a urinary tract infection, addressing these issues can often resolve the incontinence. These treatment options offer hope for those struggling with urinary incontinence, allowing for improved quality of life. And remember, while it may be an uncomfortable topic to discuss, it's crucial to speak with a healthcare provider if you're experiencing symptoms of urinary incontinence. They can help determine the best course of treatment for your specific situation. Please, subscribe now to join our community. Give us a thumbs up to encourage us to bring more interesting, challenging, and high-quality videos to everyone. Our channel, MedSign Health 360, has many more videos to bring the crucial, latest, and systemic medical and health knowledge with a simple approach to everyone for better health and a better life. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please share them in the comments below.